one breath at a time. One moment at a time. We, we bide, bide our, time. our time. Catch a breath. Hold, Hold my breath. breath. Take a breath. Welcome to the first virtual production created by the students of North Penn High School Theater and Thespian Troop 5464, Breathing Through COVID. I'm Andrea Lee Roney, the producer and co-director. Normally at this time for my curtain speech, I would be telling you where to find the restrooms, go find some snacks in admission, don't bring food back into the auditorium to protect the rug until 20, 2037. However, those announcements don't count in this virtual world. You know where your restroom is, and you're on your own for your snacks and where you eat them. What still counts is we are grateful for all of the sponsors and donations that have come in for this show already. Special thanks to our major sponsors, Worldwide Stereo, Out Loud Productions, and the North Penn School District Board of School Directors for their generosity. Please check out their ads on the website. We are grateful to you for joining us, and we are pleased to bring Breathing Through COVID to you for free. However, there were expenses. You can go to our website for more information about donations and other background information about the production. We also know that our shows, high school and middle school, have an economic impact on our community. For every $1 spent on a production, $9 goes into our community. Much of that goes to dinner and a show at local restaurants now struggling during this time. So how about takeout in a show? Sometime this weekend to help our favorite local restaurants, no matter in what community you live, as you watch this production. Finally, word of mouth continues to be our best publicity. Please share our show with those you know. There are stream performances through Sunday night, and the audience is not limited to the high school auditorium. We began creating this show in July of 2020, but its roots go back to the beginning as COVID-19 invaded our lives. Breathing through COVID is memory and response to this past year with a pandemic that we are still living through. These are the voices of our high school students, my students, your kids, our kids. Listen, they poured their hearts into this production. Be well, stay well. Thank you for joining us tonight and for supporting theater arts education. Good afternoon, North Penn High School. This is Mr. Nicholson. Please pardon this interruption. I know you all have concerns regarding the health and well-being of our school community due to the recent COVID-19 outbreak. While I do not have an announcement regarding the status of school for tomorrow, at this time I would recommend that everyone take any resources you need with you when you leave for the day today. Please make sure you take any Chromebooks, laptops, chargers, textbooks, or work with you when you leave this afternoon. Again, while I do not have a specific update, out of an abundance of caution, I would recommend that everyone takes what is needed at the end of the day today. Thank you. WHO declares COVID-19 disease to be a pandemic. The coronavirus crisis continues to unfold. The novel across coronavirus the has infected more than 118,000 people. Disney and World, killed close Disneyland to Paris Resort to close. Two TSA officers concerns. who tested positive for coronavirus performed. Coronavirus is spreading. Should you travel cancel travel your vacation? President Trump canceled travel from 26 Austin European Marathon, countries to the U.S. Masters golf tournament. No gathering with 500 people or more in New York. Mark, coronavirus U.S. stocks just plummeted for the second straight day. Millions of U.S. students 
affected by school closures. U.S. epicenter White House projects 100,000 to 200,000 COVID-19 deaths. New York City declared U.S. epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak. Nature is sending us a message. Trump says emergencies up to 50 billion people ago, more than 300 people in Florida have tested over 650 racist acts over the last week. Nurse practitioners group says it urgently needs protective gear. NBA suspends the season after several positive cases on teams. Can't become reinfected once you've had coronavirus. U.S. needs more protective equipment to help care workers as coronavirus cases start to rise. Trump extends social distancing guidelines through end of April. In the beginning, there was noise. So, so much, much noise. noise. Opinions. So, so many, many opinions. 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 Information. Not enough. And too much. Voices. Too, too many, many voices. But no one really knew anything. Worried. Scared. Separated. Quarantined. What? Schools. Closed. Businesses. Closed. Restaurants. Closed. Stores. No toilet paper or Lysol or wipes or paper towels. Wear gloves. Don't, Don't wear, wear gloves. gloves. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Stay home. Hospitals crowded. People sick. People, People dying. dying. What PPE? Stay away from older people. My grandparents? Mom's alone. Pop's in a nursing home. My mom's a nurse. She stays in the basement after work. They say dad is essential. Is that safe? Is dad safe? Are, Are we, we safe? safe? Stuff. Canceled. Sports. Canceled. Rehearsals. Canceled. Theater. Canceled. All canceled. My parents used to yell at me for being on my phone too much. Now that's, that's all we have. have. Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, and On Demand. <laughs> Videos. Texting. TikTok. Zoom. Mm -hmm. Time stopped. Days, Days have, stopped. have stopped. What month is it? I walk. I think. I write. I sew masks. I miss faces. Handshakes. High fives. Hugs. Smiles. Will they come back? Instead, we have the coronavirus, COVID-19, pandemic. No one wants it, but it's here. It's now. Now. We have now. All we have is now. What do you do with the now of now? I'm asking. I pause. One breath at a time. One moment at a time. We, we bide, bide our, time. our time. Catch a breath. Hold, Hold my, my breath. breath. Take a breath. Noun. 
from Old English. Proto-German. And Old High German. Air expelled from the lungs. Odor. Odor. Scent. Stink. Stink. Smell. Smell. Exhalation. Breath. Breath. Essence of life. Breathe. Thirteenth century. The duration of a breath. A moment. A short time. Ability to breathe. Hence, life. Fourteenth century. A breeze. A movement of air. Fifteenth century. A single act of breathing. Noun. Breath. Verb. Breathe. September 28th, 1918. Dear mother and father, it has been a grand day. I went and saw the Liberty Loan Parade. It came right down Broad Street near downtown Philadelphia. It's going to raise funds for the Great War. Oh, what a lollapalooza of a day to go outside and finally do something. What with this influenza. They actually say that it's going away, that there will be a cure soon. Oh, but the marching bands were absolute dillies. The people were so lively and energetic. Life just hasn't been like that for a while with the war and all the sickness. Everything has been so drab. I can't wait until all this madness is over and I can come and see you. I miss you very much. Sincerely, James. October 6th. 1918 to Alton W. Miller, Soldier, Camp Zachary Taylor. Dear Alton, I am glad that you still had the strength to write. Thank you for sharing more about this influenza with me instead of with mother and father. They have already been so worried about the war. They do not need any more weight to carry. I cannot imagine what it must be like to hear the constant silence of ambulances all day. I do understand that you wish to avoid going to the hospital at all costs, but perhaps you could receive some proper treatment that might help you get well. Father, mother, and I await your return soon. Your loving sister, Ada. October 1918. Dear Diary. My beau Charles is away in the war, and I am here alone. The terrible influenza is here in Michigan. My high school is closed because of it, and I am without employment. It is a trying time. There has been word that should schools reopen, we will make up time on Saturdays through the winter. It seems to be a continuous pattern of the influenza getting worse, then better, then worse again. October 12, 1918. Dear James, I'm glad to hear that you went out to support our troops. Listen, Jimmy, I know you're well aware of this influenza going around, but I want you to be careful. This isn't just some regular cold. A few newspapers last week said some folks died out near Lancaster. I also heard it's been getting pretty worse around Philadelphia, especially since that parade. Some reports say hospitals are filling up. Jimmy, son, I want you to be extra careful out in public. Make sure you're washing your hands and keeping away from anyone who doesn't look well. Don't be a sluffer in your university classes. Your mother sends her love. Love, Father. November 1918. With time on my hands, I learned to play the Star Spangled Banner on the piano. The schools decided to open, though the influenza is worse than ever. Many students have been absent from school. My cousins have been very ill and I've been helping to nurse them to make sure they don't get worse. I just wish I knew how Charles was doing. Dear Diary, Dr. Sillier sent me home today after falling asleep for the fourth time while I was with the patient. I keep thinking of 
an older nurse I met after the first time I saw someone die. I asked how she coped with it and she said I would grow used to it. I don't think anyone would become used to what I have seen. I saw my 15th patient die this week. I don't remember his name. I had to tell his family. It was brief. I gave them my condolences and went back to work. I'm afraid to take a moment just to breathe in case I'm not there for a patient who may have a chance to live. Dear Diary, the dreaded telegram arrived yesterday and now I am an only child. Mother and father are struck with grief even though they try to hide it from me. They cry at night when they think I am asleep. A telegram to inform us of Alton's death. A telegram to be followed by a box of his belongings. Has my brother really been reduced to paper and parcel? Is this what they do for all soldiers who die? All of these young men reduced to paper and parcels. Oh, Alton, I hope you knew that you were so much more than that. I love and miss you dearly. Ada. January 1919. I'm grateful to be back at work after borrowing money for four weeks. It is so hard to struggle on and not quit. Because of all the time we had lost, we decided to have school on New Year's Day. The influenza seems to be getting better here in Horton. However, I fear our soldiers are suffering in the camps and at the front. I wish, I wish I would hear from Charles. Dear Diary, I can't sleep. I try, but I am bombarded with the memories of patients. One dream that often haunts me is one of a woman named Mary Bell. She died burning and shivering of pneumonia with mahogany spots on her cheeks. I remember how she cried for her husband and children as she seemingly drowned as her lungs filled. I could only provide her comfort. She was young, 34, only three years younger than me. It scares me. I can still hear her coughing sometimes and I can't do anything about it. I wish I could get some sleep. December 9th, 1968. Kimberly, dear, thank goodness you've recovered from the flu, just as I did, and to think we were both only 10 years old. The Spanish influenza 50 years ago changed everything. We had to wear masks, stay away from people stay inside, scrub our houses and ourselves. If you were seen outside when you were sick, you were fined $50. We even sprayed water on the sidewalks to help disinfect. When I was sick, I was very close to death, but my mother, your great-grandmother, nursed me like your mother nursed you. Sadly, my dear mother passed away because I gave her the illness. That has always been a great sadness for me. 1918 was a time of grief for everyone. I am so thankful that your illness had a better outcome. I can't wait to hug you. All my love, Grandmother. Nineteen eighteen. Warnings. Sorrow. So much. Sorrow. Sadness. And keening. Did they listen to the doctors? Did they heed the warnings? Masks could save them. Quarantine could save them. Some heeded. Others flaunted the advice. With willful ignorance. All waited. All breathed. Until 
some didn't. Can we learn from them? Have we learned from them? Good evening. I am Raymond Radmaker. And I'm Ralph Radmaker. Today, we will be sharing advice from our new book, The Book of COVID. Written by the Radmaker Brothers. Chapter 1, Social Distancing. When going outside, remember to stay at least six feet away from everyone. Now, this may be difficult for some people, so we decided to invent the social distance stick patent pending. With the social distance stick, simply wave it in front of you, side to side, to keep everyone at a safe distance. I was one of the first people to order the social distance stick. This one day at the grocery store, a man in a blue shirt got a little bit too close. I decided to really stick it to him. Well, the sticks pack a wallop. Upgrade to the deluxe model, and for only $29.99, you get an extra roll of blue tape for quick fixes. And also, along with six feet social distancing, avoid large gatherings and crowds. But if you can't avoid them, we are developing the social distance hula hoop patent pending. The social distance sick franchise is not responsible for any harm or injuries due to the use of this product. Yeah! yeah. Hey, Dad, you got it working. Hi, honey. Mom, your camera's off. What? Jen, push the camera button. This? Hit start video. On the keyboard? On the screen. Here? Mom, back up from the camera. Well, then I can't see you. Put your glasses on. They're on your head, Mom. Thank you, honey. Oh, Stephanie, do you need anything? Blankets, snacks? Mom, I'm fine. It's the basement, not a prison. One more week of quarantine from college. It'll be April 1st soon. Joey's not here. Joey! 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 Whew, I'm here, I'm here. <sighs> Granny and Pops will be here in a minute. Uh, do you all have the masks Granny made? Doesn't she know that knitted masks don't work? Just be nice, please. Here they are. My oh, babies! Oh, hey guys, it's so good to see you. Uh, is this thing working? Pops, there's something in front of your camera. Something Kirby, in front of my camera? Oh, this thing. Can you see me now? Good, Pops. How are you? Stephanie, you're home from college. Shirley, we can't see you. What do you mean you can't see me? I can see you. Grandma, your camera is pointed to the ceiling. What? Move your screen oh, so we you can are. see you. You all look like the Brady Bunch on TV. Oh, it's so Hi, good Granny. to see all my babies. Kids, do you have something to say to Granny? Thank you for the mask, Granny. Thank you thank for the you mask, so Granny. You look cute. Granny. Shirley, they can't wear masks with holes in them. Who wear other masks under them, Pops? Jennifer, guess who's coming? Your sister! Mom, she it's just you. supposed to be us so tonight. So I sent them your email. And here they are. Hi, y'all. We've missed you. Pops, Lucy, it's so good to see you. Granny, Crystal, you, you look so mask. adorable. Hi, Crystal. What's Aunt Karen doing? Karen, you're muted again. Oh, I always do that. Look, there you all are. Great to see you, honey. 
I Joey, know how so that's never going to be Joey. Oh, so long as it's Karen, you can make Joey cousin Jim's Karen, did you want to be Why is Quiet! Yeah, I sent Jim the card last week. Quiet! Thanks. What did you say, Steph? So Steph, Great how anatomy. much longer in the basement? Too many people talking. But I like the longer. It's Balance or Consequences, the game show that asks the question, what should you do? Get the right answer and stay balanced. Choose the wrong answer and take the consequences. And now, our host, Anita Buzzer. Thank you, thank you. We have a great show for you tonight with special celebrity guests as well as our wall of stars. Let me introduce you to our contestants. Welcome Cher Horwitz from the movie Clueless and Rory Gilmore from that ever popular TV show Gilmore Girls. And let's have a warm welcome for our wall of stars who will help Cher and Rory to stay balanced or face some consequences. In square number one we have Hermione, the brightest witch of her age and friend to Harry Potter. In square number two, meet Stitch from the island of Hawaii, all alone and missing his pal Lilo. In square number three, hail Forrest Gump, ping pong champion and owner of Bubba Gump Shrimp Restaurant. In square number four, the ever gracious and vivacious Dolly Levi. Hello, Dolly. In square number five, greet Pam Beasley, the most conscientious employee in the office. And last, but certainly not least, in square number six, it's Mrs. Doubtfire, the nanny with an attitude and accent. The theme of tonight's game is, what else but COVID-19? And our contestants tonight are playing for donations to their favorite charities. As always, I will ask the questions. Then stars, it's up to you to help our contestants make the right choice or not. Remember, Sharon Rory, for each question, you get three stars to help you find balance or face the consequences. So, contestants, stars, audience, ready to play? Good luck, contestants. After a quick game of rock, paper, scissors backstage, Cher gets the first question. Cher, you are walking across the sidewalk in the middle of a busy city when you see an old lady about to cross the street. She seems like she is struggling a bit with her walker and some packages and needs help. However, she's not wearing a mask. What should you do? That's a difficult question. I always want to help people, but then again, the virus is around. I know who can help me. I'm going to ask Forrest Gump, Mrs. Doubtfire, and Stitch what they should do. You heard her, stars. Forrest Gump, you're first. What should Cher do? Well, my mama always told me to help people. So, I'll say one, wear a mask. Two, offer her an extra mask. Three, help her across the street. Oh, and then sanitize. Thank you, Forrest. I like the hand sanitizer. What should Cher do, Mrs. Doubtfire? Little old ladies have to stick together, dearie. I say, cheer her on. Mrs. Doubtfire, you are our favorite old lady. Stitch, you have the final answer. What should Cher do? Stitch says, put bags over your head for protection. Then try to help the old lady. Yay, Stitch. Cher, you heard the choices. Which one should you do? Well, you know I love cheering. And Stitch's bags could always be designer bags. But I'm going with Forrest Gump, as I like to help people, too. And I always carry an extra bedazzled mask. Cher, that's what you should do. You stay balanced and get the first point. So, Rory, your turn. Here's your question. Valentine's Day is coming soon, but the pandemic will still be with us. Your crush decides to invite you to an exclusive party with the in crowd. Even though those invited are super popular and it's a huge social thing, you know they don't wear masks around groups of people. What should you do? 
a Valentine's party? That's hard after months of being quarantined. I'll need some woman power to help me answer this one. So I'm going to ask Hermione, Dolly Levi, and Pam for some help. Hermione, you've been faced with some social dilemmas while fighting Voldemort. What should Rory do? Well, since final exams are coming up in a couple of months, studying is what you should be doing. I would turn down the dates and hope you don't face social ruin and crush your hopes and dreams. Hermione, always the good student. So, Mrs. Dolly Levi, what should Rory do? Social activity is important for all of us right now. I say, show up to the date wearing a hazmat suit and a spring of pearls in case the party is fancy dress. Interesting social and fashion advice from Mrs. Levi. Pam, we've seen some of your awkward social entanglements. So what is your Valentine's Day party advice to Rory? Well, I think you should suggest to your crush and those popular folks that now everyone FaceTimes instead of gathering in person. Safety first. The party can still be fun. Rory, the ladies have spoken. Which star's advice do you think will keep you balanced? Of course, I agree with Hermione about studying, but I'm missing social engagements. Though, I'm not sure a hazmat suit with pearls is a good idea. So, I'm going to have to go with Pam. The party can be virtual and I can still see my crush and everyone will be safe. Rory, that's right. <laughs> Rory and Cher, stars, audience at home, we have ourselves a tied game. Time for the lightning round. All six of our stars provide an answer to the same question. Rory and Cher will write their choices on the cards in front of them. Contestants and those playing at home, listen carefully to the question and the answers. The lightning round question is, the turkey farm where your family planned to buy your Thanksgiving turkey had an employee test positive for COVID. Social distancing is difficult and wearing masks is optional for the employees and the gobblers. Do you buy the turkey there or go to a different farm? What should you do? We're going to go clockwise around our star wall with Hermione giving the first answer. Well, I think I'd just use my wand and put masks on all the employees and turkeys and buy my bird. Stitch doesn't have a wand, but Stitch thinks Lilo and Stitch should skip the turkey and go right to the pumpkin pie. Well, I always liked a sandwich after a fest ping pong match, so I'd just go to the store and pick up some turkey lunch meat. Turkey? Who wants turkey? Give me champagne and caviar! Why would the turkeys wear masks? The employees should wear masks and take care of each other. So I say go to a farm where they do wear masks. Well, dearies, turkeys are part of a special day with families. We must be safe and keep each other, t each other safe too. So have a frozen turkey delivered by a store. Defrost it in the refrigerator over several days and then soak it in Lysol before cooking. That should kill any spiky COVID germs and keep your bird juicy while roasting. Rory and Cher, the stars have spoken. You have five seconds to choose your answer by writing the name of the star you have chosen. Ladies, markers down and flip up your cards. You both chose Pam. But is that the right answer? Cher and Rory, we have a tie. Pam is right. We should all wear masks and take care of each other. Rory and Cher, you are balanced women. Stars, thank you for your answers. Cher and Rory, great game. To thank you all for playing with us tonight, a donation is being made to your favorite charity, Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. And we invite our audience at home to donate to Broadway Cares too. And to everyone, as we continue through this time of COVID, always ask yourself, what should I do to keep myself and others around me safe? 
Thank you for joining us for Balance or Consequences. Stay safe, healthy, and balanced. Good evening. I am Raymond Radmaker. And I'm Ralph Radmaker. Today, we will be discussing our new book, The Book of COVID. Written by the Radmaker Brothers. Chapter 2, Masks. In this chapter, we will be discussing masks. Now, there is scientific evidence that the virus travels through the air on water droplets that come from your mouth. Your mouth generates about 100 droplets ranging from 20 to 500 micrometers each time you open it. If droplets land in the mouth, nose, or inhaled into the lungs, a person can contract the virus. Wearing masks reduces the amount of droplets dispersed, which helps reduce the risk of catching the virus. Mask wearing and social distancing go hand in hand. Ralph! <clears throat> um, mask wearing also provides other advantages, such as trapping your bad breath. Therefore, I like to think as brushing my teeth as an option. <sighs> that is why I continue to social distance myself from Ralph. Luckily, we have invented the Minty Mask. Come on, Timmy, I have to get you to school! Aw, oh, Ma, I have to wear that stupid mask. But I got you the Minty Mask. What's a Minty Mask? The Minty Mask. You never have to worry about having bad breath again. I used to brush my teeth in the morning, but now I simply put on my Minty Mask and bing bada boom, I'm set. Ever since I started buying my son the Minty Mask, he wears his mask. I'm so proud of my little pork chop. The masks are a real lifesaver. Mom! The Minty Mask franchise is not responsible for any dental issues you may have after using the Minty Masks daily. There is some confusion about wearing your mask properly. Make sure it is secure around your head and covers both your mouth and your nose. Yeah! yeah. I feel blinded. Blinded by the fact that I don't know how you are. I see you on the phone. I see you from afar. I hear you on the phone. I hear you from afar. I'm in the dark. Blinded because I can't feel you. I can't put my arms around you. I don't know how you really feel inside. Blinded because you are alone. Stuck in a prison of solitude caused by a parasite we call COVID. Caused by self-centered people who only think of themselves. My life can keep on moving. Slightly. I can go to work. I can go to sports. But while I am there, I think of you. I think about your Sunday dinners. I think about how you are, my second mom. You raised me. You are a part of me. And yet... I think about you sitting alone, blinded to the outside world in the final years of your life. Judge Judy can't help fill the void. Puzzles cannot fill your day. How long can this go on? How long can you last alone? This mask of blindness must come off. This cannot go on. I need to feel your arms around me. I need to know you aren't in the dark. I miss you, my best friend, my rock, 
my grandmother. Every day I wake up, then I start to get dressed. Turn to channel six, and then I start feeling stressed. I'm so sick and tired of feeling like I'm less than. It feels like I'm oppressed, man. I don't know if I'm angry or if I'm scared. Maybe a mix. Open your eyes. There has to be a fix. When you can kneel on someone's neck while they're crying and they're pleading, it shows how we take one step forward. And then we start seceding. I'm ready to take off my mask and stop hiding what I believe. And I won't stop until it's over because I can't breathe. Hey guys. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good, just good. chilling, you know. You know, I've seen like the riots and everything and the protests going on in the news. Have any of you guys gone to any? Because I know I haven't been allowed to or able to. I couldn't. My parents wouldn't let me. I, it was also because of the pandemic, too. I mean, it's scary even thinking about going out and fighting for that. It's, it's really sad at this point. It should be a given, you know? Um, I couldn't. Because, you know, we have uh, the social media into play. So where we see protests equals riots. So my parents saw the same thing. It was like, I couldn't go. So I had to voice my opinion through social media. My family is like pretty cautious with COVID, but I just think it's awful how the media and so many people are twisting it into something that it's not. You know, the riots are such a rare occasion, you know, like 2% of all, if that, of all protests turn into riots and so many other ones are such beautiful gatherings. You know, you see people sharing poetry, sharing their own experiences. And I think it really is such an emotional, such a, a driving event that I think anybody when we're not in a pandemic should get the opportunity to go to and to fight for something that is so important. Yeah, back in like June and everything, it really got, it picked up a lot too. It's really tough seeing all that. How are you guys feeling? I, I don't even know if I was like surprised. Like when I saw it, it was just like, oh, okay, it happened again. Like I feel like it's been happening so much. Like I get, I'm getting, starting to get desensitized to it. You know what I mean? And in the black community, we become so desensitized to another black man being killed. So it's not something new that we talk about and it's a problem with not just the black community, but all lives. Yeah, I mean, it. it's like what Keenan said. I was just like, I saw it and I just like didn't know how to feel, you know, or like what emotions to feel. Cause like, I know for a while I refrained from watching any videos of it. Cause like, I just, I was like, no, like it didn't, It's it didn't happen. And then I remember a few days later, I sat down and watched it and I was like, this is real. Like, this is still going on. Um, and it's just, it just hurts because like seeing like my dad and like my friends, like knowing that they have that fear when they walk out of the house every day is like, it just, it just hurts my heart a lot. It doesn't affect you because you're light. My heart sank and my stomach dropped. A person of color dies at the hands of the police. I, I think about my dad, I think about my cousins, I think about my family and my friends. I wonder what happens to them each time they walk out of the door every day. How they feel. I look in the mirror, I see my big curly hair, a skin that's light, but a heart that hurts. I am mixed, does that make me less black? It's in my blood, it's who I am. Do simple genetics like the percentage of melanin in my skin disqualify me from grieving? Does it disqualify me as I look at my white mother from the part of me that isn't like her? Up until recently, I was a happy kid. I played with everyone. Now, in a divided world who is angry and hurting, I'm told I'm exempt from an opinion. I'm exempt from hurt. It doesn't make sense. I embrace every part of me, the good, the grumpy, the silly, and the big curls. I embrace me, I embrace you. I'm allowed to feel and I'm allowed to identify. I'm a woman of color and my life matters. Not 50%, 100. It's not that hard to treat somebody nice. And if it is, trust me, no one would be here, okay? Nobody would be here. As a, as a black boy, like, I, I'm supposed to, like, set an example for, especially, like, how my parents saw me. They're like, you gotta do this, do this, and do this. And, like, they taught me that from, like, a young age because, like, 
I had to re like they had to tell me like I'm di like I'm supposed to, like it's supposed to be equal, but I'm different. You know what I mean? Like I I I have to go about things differently. I can't do the same things that my other friends can. We have to fight for everything. No matter if it's a job, no matter if it's a position, like anything, we have to fight for absolutely everything and that's what they don't get. And I hate using that word they, only because like we are all human, we are, but we always separate each other. Yeah. I get separated from my white friends. Oh, but, and it's not, maybe they don't realize it, but it happens. You know, We've been seeing so much of this lately in the media. It's really, really starting to pick up. But I think like we have to remember, this has been developing for years. Black Lives Matter did not start this year. It started so many years ago. I just think it's really important that we think about how this is developing and how it's been growing for so long. They're not, no one's making just a big fuss right now. It's been a big fuss for so many years and it should be such a big deal because it is such an important topic. As I watch my fellow brother on the ground pleading for breath, falling on deaf ears, a knee is the cause of his death, a knee. Outside looking in, I see the world mourns as his child weeps. I hear the cry for justice and equality for that which they seek. I am breathing through a mask. My words muffled by riots, but where peace and love lie, I will always stand by it. Trying to figure out why without reason. Trying to figure out why the wound of slavery is still bleeding. I am breathing through a mask. It gets hard seeing mothers to sharp faces. And it gets worse when I hear the not guilty cases. Breonna Taylor. We all saw or heard how the bullets unjustly impaled her. I just hope one day we find justice for those who died. Until then, I hope my people protest with a powerful stride. I am breathing through a mask. It's scary as well, because then as black people, we do have our guards up, period. No matter what, even if a cop's there for help, we still have our guards up, because we don't know what's happening. We don't know what's gonna make him go kaboom one day. You think at this point in time, like it doesn't happen anymore, or it shouldn't happen anymore, but it still does, so I'm like, what does my brother feel like when he walks out the house every morning? Like, how do my friends feel? Like, it's just, it's so disheartening on so many levels. It's, it's really scary, cause like, like even, and it's, it's always crazy when it's like, it's like the cops and stuff, cause it's always like when they got pulled over or something like that, and it's like, and I drive now, so it's like, I, I'll, I'll be in my car sometimes, and I'll be like, what if I started speeding by accident, I didn't know, and then that's the last time I said goodbye to my parents, or like, I love you, or something like that. It's something that people need to understand is a occurring thing in our society and it's not necessarily like a bad thing to understand. Do you know what I mean? Once you realize that, hey, I'm not going to get pulled over because of my skin color, like that is a privilege every day for me to go to my car, drive to school, drive to work, whatever, and not be worried about getting pulled over for that. Now speeding is a different story, but <laughs> I just... I think it's a conversation people need to definitely have about white privilege. I see my mom and it's like, it's different because I have to look at her a different way than I look at my dad because they're two different skin tones. I have to gone through different things. So it's like, I know that my mom has worked for everything that she has and nothing was like handed to her in certain aspects. But it's like, it was like how Keenan was saying like, I've seen my dad have to put on certain facades around certain groups of people because he doesn't want to get looked at differently or make me feel like I'm getting looked at differently when he's around. You know, I think about All Lives Matter and white privilege and how that plays a part in my life and how that plays a part in so many white people's lives. And I've been seeing this thing on social media recently. It says, white people can be average while black people have to excel. And I just think that's, it's so awful. You know, you see white people and black people doing the same jobs and the black people aren't getting praise as much for it. And that's so, so wrong because they do it with so much adversity against them and they do it with so much already stacked on the opposite side as them. And I think it's just so, so important that we're able to recognize both completely equally and that we're able to give both so much credit 
I can kind of relate to the Blue Lives Matter movement because both my parents are cops. So I have one, I have one side where I can relate to, where I can see, oh, but my dad's a cop and he's not bad. But I can also see from another side where they're like, oh, but I'm fearful of cops. See, I've saw, I've seen people slash my dad's tires for being a cop. So I can relate to both sides of discouragement. But when I see all lives, I don't understand that protest because how are you about all lives matter, but you don't want to protest the lives that are in trouble and that are protesting for their rights. It doesn't make sense. You know, education is so important in this time you know before people can sympathize they have to really understand exactly what's going on and it can't be information that's been skewed so like do you guys really think that we're being educated enough no not at all i mean i've taken so many social studies classes it's my favorite subject i love history and throughout all of them i've probably touched upon african -Amer american history culture all that maybe like three times in my four years of high school. And it, it's it's really disheartening to hear that, you know, because it's not something I didn't want to learn. It's something that I didn't know was there to learn. It, it, it needs to be in our history books. Like, I should open up a book and I should go to the chapter, lesson four, chapter six, and learn about black history. There's so much that we don't know and we don't even know that it's there, so it's like, we learn about other countries, other groups who've been oppressed, like we learn about like the Holocaust, but the only thing we learn about for black history is slavery. And I just feel like there have been so many more events and more people that we haven't been able to learn about and inventions that we use every day that have been invented by black inventors. We have no clue. I think we should incorporate that into the education system so we can culture people so it won't seem as we're complaining oh my gosh they want this oh my gosh we want that no we need this so people can be aware culturally aware so we want to have these racial problems in schools or racial problem in the justice system march 12th 2020 was the last time i stepped foot into my school building that was the last time anyone stepped foot into a school building. News, news. Keep watching the news because you don't know what's going to happen next. If they're even going to tell you. Jobs were lost. No money. Praying for a paycheck. Now families are motherless, fatherless, grandfatherless. Am I scared? Black bloodshed on the hands of men who are here to protect and serve again and again. Fellow brothers, fathers, sons. Killed. Murder, protest, riots, in which I do not condone the burning of the cities and stores in our community. But if you feel what's inside of me, from every whip, every chain, every rope, every bullet, every lynching, every beating, every shooting, every little black boy thrown into the river to drown for the piranhas to eat, you would want to burn something down too. And that's only the physical. Mentally, we have been lynched, drowned, and tortured from all angles. This is the endless cycle of we are tired. We are tired in a pandemic that has targeted us too. Am I scared though? Scared of what may happen during this election? Scared this may be our only chance to change? It's scary to leave the house. It's even scary to sleep in my own house. Law enforcement forgets that I'm human. They forgot what they represent. They don't understand the pain and struggle we get from losing our family members, but they do understand the system and will choose that job over any human black life. Maybe I should say a few bad apples, which we cannot afford. Now that person is gone, surrounded by wooden boards. There is no return when the bullet hits their body. When the look of agony, worry, stress, and fear is crystal clear in my mother's eyes, it is identical to every black mother that has ever existed in America. So yes, I am scared. Scared, but not broken. Not paralyzed either. 
I will fight to rebuild the system that made Elijah McClain say, I am sorry. Fight for Breonna Taylor, who was awakened with a bang at the door. Fight for George Floyd, who was forced to scream, I can't breathe. Fight for the lives who were taken, who were not caught on camera. What else is there to do? If we stop fighting, we won't stop dying.
breathe. Verb, Latin. Sperare. To breathe. Inspirare. To breathe or blow into. Breath. Life. Breathe. Inspire. To inspire. To live. To hope. Breathe. breathe. Ever since I could remember, my parents talked to me about the importance of making friends. It seemed really easy when I was younger. I mean, the biggest argument I ever got in was over who got to play with what Barbie doll in the playroom. But I'm in high school now. And it's totally different. I constantly think, who's laughing at me? Who's talking about me behind my back? Who's judging me because of the way I look, dress, or even act? That's why some people may say I'm shy or quiet. Actually, I'm so scared that if I say one wrong thing, even if it's answering a teacher's question in class, that all the friends I have now will regard me as the biggest loser, or possibly even as an embarrassment. So I put on the mask of being quiet. I do think though, what if my life was the complete opposite? What if I was a little louder, more confident in who I am? Would that change anything? Or would the one thing that I fear the most actually happen? Would I be rejected for being me? It's scary. The strange thing is though, I like me without the mask. I'm just not sure if anyone else does. Welcome to this evening's BTC News. As always, I'm your host, Sky Brown. Today the focus is masks. They have become a part of our everyday wear. They are fashion statements, triggers of disagreement, and inform our reflections about what it means to cover half of our face. Jeremy Dermasessian is in another studio with our community checking in with some of our young people about masks and how they affect them. That's right, Sky. And with me are some students from the high school who have graciously agreed to talk with us. I have with me Emily, a junior in high school. First, masks are mandatory, right? Yes. What have you noticed about students wearing masks? Well, some students have found other ways to interact with each other besides smiling. For example, waving. Not seeing smiles is hard. Yes, it really is. But seeing someone without a mask is even harder. You want to remind them, but it's uncomfortable to tell someone that they're not wearing a mask correctly or to put on a mask. You don't want to offend them. It could get really awkward sometimes. So masks can cause some awkward social situations. You thought so too, right, Shamira? There are two different types of students that wear masks. The ones that take it seriously and the ones that don't. What do you mean, Shamira? Some students barely wear the mask around their mouth and their nose, and probably wore the same mask they've been wearing for a few days. I've seen kids in the hallways wear their mask all sorts of wrong ways, and it's kind of sad to see how ignorant they are by risking somebody else's life and theirs. Some teens forget to bring their masks and the end of school. Some teens wear their masks Definitely because they covered their mouth not or not the case. Agreed, but I also feel with masks, it makes it so much easier to mask your emotions. Can you explain, Harley? 
Sure. Some people already hide their feelings, but with masks, it makes it so much easier to make it look like you're smiling when secretly you're really hurting inside. As for me, instead of masking my emotions, I prefer to write or listen to music. Emily, Shamira, and Harley, thank you. But masking or how we mask isn't the only topic on these students' minds. Meet Kayla. She has some thoughts on after-school jobs students often need to have. Working during this time can get challenging, especially when I have to work right after school. Every Thursday, I work from 5 to 9, and every month our theater department has a fun monthly meeting that overlaps. I have to leave early, and I hate missing out on everything. Other days, I also work right after school, and I have to come home late, and then I have to stay up and do my homework. It's an adventure. That's a demanding schedule, Kayla. So when we were talking earlier, you were all relating how it is to be at home in virtual or hybrid learning when your parents are working at home or younger siblings are also in school. Audrey, can you share your experiences? Yeah, we've been very fortunate. Since the beginning of quarantine, my dad was able to come home and work from home. And overall, I think he likes working from home. He has this little makeshift office in the basement, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and my siblings and I are all in grades middle school and up, so we're pretty self-sufficient and a lot of the teaching responsibility isn't on my parents, so. Jeremy, is there someone else with a different experience? Yes, Chinwei. Virtual schooling was definitely difficult at first, but over time, my family and I have come up with creative solutions. We figured out different things that work, like creating designated working spaces for everyone, quiet hours so people can attend meets and do homework without being interrupted, and weekly check-ins so we can see how everyone's doing. We find ways we can all work together so we can all succeed. It's still not perfect, but we're working hard to communicate and adapt better. Creative families supporting each other. That is a positive result of dealing with this pandemic. Thank you students for your insights. BTC News also sent out a challenge to students in our viewing area to record their feelings about this time of COVID. The challenge included is finding artistic ways of expression. We received many responses, some of which we're gonna share with you now. In this time where we use masks to protect our faces, have we forgotten about the faces we put on to protect ourselves? Is there a difference between the two anymore? Have they melded together? Has society forgot about these shields and let flow the most vulgar emotions from within? There's so much unrest. Stress is abundant. How can we find peace? With so much clouding our views, can we find rest? We can't let this take us. Let's move past this and find the goodness that takes us beyond this. To peace. And to rest. Smiles, sadness, anger, all hidden away just by a piece of cloth. Before, people could see what you were really feeling. Hiding away seems so easy now. You never know how a person is feeling. People don't see your real emotions anymore. After all the days stuck inside, we try to go out for interaction. All we are given is bodies, eyes, eyebrows, hair. But what's the thing we are missing? A smile. A smile can light up the world. It can clear away the darkness, but instead it's hidden by what? I think what I miss the most is seeing that someone cares. Cares enough to make a simple gesture. The gesture holds such a powerful message. A gesture that only takes 17 muscles. 17. The mind can be a dangerous place when the force of a tough decision is applied to it. Just one decision can impact every event beyond it. But that never crosses the mind as a decision is being made. Choices have dwindled away with the resources we relied heavily on, and focus has shifted to what is needed rather than what is wanted. We've lost so much. Hanging out with friends, meeting new people, 
making personal connections with others, but our lives continued to move forward. It seemed at the beginning that all communication was lost. We were handed a blue piece of paper with white loops and told that it was the only way to stay safe. The design on these masks evolved and now reflect the personality of the person wearing them. Whispers, smiles, are now ignored. Lipstick and braces cannot be seen, but what replaces the gloom of this dreadful pandemic is the diverse selection of mask fanatics. Floral and striped, checkered and dotted, a variety of hues, which will always give you a muffled laugh or a secret smile. March 13th, 2020. It wasn't serious, it was actually pretty funny. It's just two weeks and then spring break, and then another seven months, give or take. They say we don't know what we have until it's gone. But what happens when we're isolated and we have to look beyond? Beyond screens, beyond calls, beyond a piece of fabric, learning to adapt, accept, and get past something drastic. We'll fake smiles you'll never see while we cope with a new reality. But we aren't alone with the burdens we share, despite the masks we wear. Powerful words speak to us all as we come to the end of another segment of BTC News. Thank you for joining us. Have a special evening and make it special evening for someone else too. Good evening. I am Raymond Rademacher. And I'm Ralph Rademacher. Today, we will be sharing advice from our new book, The Book of COVID. Written by the Radmaker Brothers. Chapter 3. Virtual Meeting Protocols. With social distancing rules and guidelines, talking to friends, relatives, teachers, or co-workers is more difficult. One thing I tend to forget about is making sure I'm wearing slacks before I stand up during a call. I can't tell you how many times my unmentionables have made a cameo appearance. Ray, you're on mute for crying out loud. Always be sure to unmute when speaking. I would never want anyone to miss out on my pearls of wisdom. And that brings us to our next invention, the sticky cheat sheet. It reminds you of all the tasks you have to do to have a successful call and keeps them from being a real hassle. It saved me. Now everything is working great. That's right. Order now and you can have your very own Sticky Cheat Sheet for $99.99 plus shipping and handling or four easy payments of $24.99. But wait, there's more. Call 012-345-6789 right now to get two Sticky Cheat Sheets for only $169.99. Now you and your friends can go online without going crazy. Good job, honey. Oh, Lucy, thank you for peeling the potatoes. You're welcome. Don't forget the turkey. Stephanie's here. Hey guys, happy Thanksgiving. We miss you. Me too, but it's safer to stay at my dorm. Oh, Jen, don't forget to get the turkey out of the oven. I won't. That's what you say every year. And then the smoke alarm goes off. Right, Steph? Right, Joey. Don't worry, Always. Chris. Oh, here they come. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Pops, there's something in front of your camera again. There is? Oh, dang. Happy Thanksgiving. Now you can see me. Shift your screen again, Granny. Better? Yay, Granny. Yay, Granny. Yay, Granny. Happy Thanksgiving! Happy, Happy, Thursday. Thursday. Happy Thanksgiving! Okay, we're, we all promise not to talk at once, right? 
Right, Dad. Mum's the word. Okay, I'll start. Uh, Karen, what new recipe did you try this year? Oh, we're having tofu turkey. I made it all myself. Sounds yummy. How's that going for you, Bob? Great. So, what is tofu turkey? Well, it's made from soybeans and... Mom's gone vegan. Delicious. Can you still have well, the mashed Dad, potatoes? But how can Sweet you still have okay? Made with soy milk and turkey day without so turkey. Does it taste Not like real turkey? Exactly, exactly like, like it. it. It wasn't vegan cheese. Jen, the turkey. Oh no, I Mom. forgot it. Well, it wouldn't be turkey day without Jen setting off the smoke alarm. Remember last year when the fire company came? And there was smoke through the whole house? And we had to eat outside we didn't on have the picnic. Turkey, Did you day on turkey Day last year either. Poor mom. But at least we're here together. Way. Sort of. Except for, oh, here they come. Rescue the turkey. No fire company this year. Now we're all together. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. I like the tofu turkey. Give me a real bird any Good day. thing you changed the batteries in the fire alarm. Yeah, we got your clock. Right you can. I made mine with organic Joey could use some help in that. Here we go again. Good evening. I am Raymond Radmaker. And I'm Ralph Radmaker. We will be sharing advice with you from our new book, The Book of COVID. Written by the Radmaker Brothers. Chapter 4, COVID Essentials. The most effective way to get rid of germs is to use just plain soap and water. We recommend washing your hands for at least 20 seconds. This can be done while singing. If, if you're, you're healthy, healthy and you mean it, wash your hands. If you're healthy and you mean it, wash your hands. If you're healthy and you mean it, then you really want to clean it. If you're healthy and you mean it, wash your hands. Or you could use hand sanitizer. But not so much, Ralph. We need to share. Raymond and I have also found in our extensive research that if you were to forget your social distancing, that having disinfectant spray works to clean the air and keep others away from you. But... Don't spray disinfectant spray on people or ingest it. During quarantine, many stores ran out of these essentials. Luckily, we have just the thing. Introducing the COVID apocalypse kit. Oh no, I just touched this doorknob and now I have an itch on my nose, but I can't touch my face. I have to go to the store, but I don't want to touch all the stuff and the inside of my car, too. Has this ever happened to you? Introducing the COVID Apocalypse Kit with all the emergency supplies you need when you need them. Wow, look at all this great stuff in here. Wipes, disinfectant spray, toilet paper, minty masks, and hand sanitizer. And for only $249.99, and it came in just six weeks. What a deal! And soon to be published, The Book of COVID Part 2, with even more helpful tips. Yeah! yeah. Twenty twenty. New year. New beginnings. Hopes. Dreams. Resolutions. Then March 11th. Tom Hanks. Positive. Travel bans declared. 1,267 cases and rising. How could we know that everything would stop? How could we know our world would freeze? We are suspended in motion and life. 
Everything stops. Everyone stops. The country is closed. The world is closed. All businesses. All busyness. Halted. Paused. Stop. What now? What is to come? Uncertainty. Quiet. Fear. Time. Confusion. Reflection. Day after day, it was the same routine. I get up early, go to school, stay after school, go home and do homework, and go to sleep. And guess what? I get to repeat the same thing the rest of the week. I'll admit, some nights I got very stressed out with the amount of stuff I was balancing. Like when I had tests and assignments all due at the same time. My weekends consisted of getting up bright and early to spend at school for my long, tiring rehearsals. And staying up late, hanging out with friends so they didn't think I didn't have time for them. And also doing schoolwork. Sometimes I wish I could just have a break from it all. Just to catch up on everything and relax. Day one. It's March 13th and school closed last night. I think everyone's overreacting about this whole coronavirus thing, but it gets me two weeks off school, so I'm okay with it. Day six. Both of my sisters are officially home from college. Their classes have gone virtual. I'm not so sure what that means for them, but what it means for me is that I'm finally not left alone with my parents. Day 10. I went on 14 walks in four days, and I have to constantly be quiet because my sisters are on their Zoom calls. I'm finally starting to understand what it means to go stir crazy. Day 11. My family is irritating me today. I'm really missing being the only child home. I tried praying about it today, but it's really hard when everything around me keeps getting worse. Day 12. I coughed today and I haven't coughed in a while and now I think I might have COVID. Day 13, I don't have COVID, but I'm still feeling extremely overwhelmed. We start virtual school soon, and I don't even understand how it's supposed to work. Day 14, I prayed today, and I'm feeling better. I still don't know what's going to happen with this pandemic, but I've decided to leave it in God's hands. I have a feeling this isn't going to end until mid-April. I didn't know when I was going to see my friends again, and I was so confused along with the rest of the world. But suddenly, I was able to comprehend one thing, Animal Crossing New Horizons. This game came out right when we all had to lock ourselves indoors and had way too much time on our hands. And now we could do something with that time. In Animal Crossing, I moved to a small town, paid off my loans, and met my neighbors, and transformed it into what I wanted it to be. Some daunting tasks, I know, but in Animal Crossing, we were actually getting things done, actually outside, and we were talking to people. We couldn't do that in the real world, and now we could in game. And I could play online with my friends. As I felt like the world was falling apart, my little town and animal friends were there to make me feel at peace again. So when quarantine started, it sucked. Uh, I hated virtual school. I didn't like being stuck inside. My, my life was feeling pretty half empty. And at the time, I had been expecting a package in the mail, a movie. It was supposed to come in April, but because of Amazon and quarantine, that didn't happen. April wasn't the best for me. But then May happened, and then right at the beginning of the month, I got my movie in the mail after multiple delays and pushbacks. 
It was glorious. I watched the movie and loved it, making my life instead feel half full. And so I've been watching it repeatedly for months. Months. Jeez. My niece Willow celebrates her first birthday this month. This is the first time my family's getting back together since quarantine started. We FaceTime every day, and seeing her squishy cheeks on a screen brings me so much joy. Then at the party, there she is, my little ray of sunshine, wearing the tiniest cheetah print romper I have ever seen, with matching headbands and shoes. She gets a small smash cake put in front of her and practically dives into it, smushing all the chocolate cake and pink icing around her face. To her, us, the cake looks little, but to her, it's a gigantic mountain of sugar. It just depends on your perspective. I have so much time on my hands. I'm applying for a job. I'm getting back into drawing. My mom started showing me movies that she liked when she was my age. They're all things that I enjoy. I just never had the time for them before. I always thought like, oh, I'll get to it at some point. I just never did. Looking back, I thought my life was so full of things to do. I never had time for the more important things. Now I'm focusing on what's really important. Senior year. So excited, yet so scared. Am I going to be able to have a normal year? They said the class of 2020 got the worst end of the stick, but it seems our stick got lost in the woods of 2020. I'm already stressed about choosing which college to go to. I don't want to stress about choosing between hybrid or virtual classes. My year of last may not even have its first. How do I even begin? So listen, this summer has been rough. I've been jumping from job to job, losing one after the next. At the beginning, I had a job at a summer camp, but before the summer even started, I got the email that they were closing. Then I did find another job, but they closed before I could even start. Eventually I was able to work for a day, then they closed. Now I do have a job, but it's not the best. I have to stay on my feet for four hours at a time. But at least it's something. We still aren't allowed to go into the school building yet, but I'm not really sure if I want to anymore. I'm kind of comfortable with the whole home routine now. Well, it's the Halloween season, and I was supposed to hand out candy or have a small party with my friends, but of course I made those plans before this year ever happened. I guess I kind of feel bad for all the little kids who missed out trick-or-treating this year. I remember how much fun I used to have with my friends, and well, anyways, me and my family had our own party, and we decorated the house, and had pizza, and played games, and it was so much fun. Uh, oh, and I can't forget the best part. I carved this really creepy and beautiful pumpkin. And yeah, well, I guess o October wasn't so bad. I've seen my grandparents twice over the pandemic. Outside, six feet apart. I miss hugging my grandma every Sunday. I miss playing cards and baking with them. The other day, I heard my mom and aunt talking about Thanksgiving this year. How we are going to host it because my grandparents are high risk. I would love to have Thanksgiving with them, but it doesn't feel safe. My aunt suggested we eat in her dining room while my grandparents sit in the sun room. My grandma said she wouldn't feel safe inside, only outside. Mom suggested our garage. We have room to sit six feet apart and we can stay warm by renting heaters. My grandparents agreed. It feels crazy to me that we are having Thanksgiving in our garage, but I'd rather be six feet away from my grandparents than not spend Thanksgiving with them. During quarantine, I basically am playing a game of catch up. Hey, what can you do when you can't see your friends who fair for the holidays? At the, bing at the beginning, I had, a I had a strict schedule. Wake up at 8 o'clock, then work till 11 and have lunch, then work more and more and more and more and more. Now, I just do whatever I want. I'll watch a whole season of Avatar and read 20 more chapters of that one book. Quarantine has kind of taught me to just chill out and let go of most of my worries. Sure, I didn't have my sweet 16 or see six the musical on Broadway, or even have my ninth grade formal. And all I wanted was a four day weekend, but hey, this is where we are. I 
I will practice doing the things I love to do. I will never take anything for granted. I will not take school for granted. I will learn how to cook family recipes. I will put my family and friends first. I will stop worrying about things that are out of my control. I will teach my niece that music is fun. I will go on my senior prom. The world became too loud. 24-7 news on phones, TVs, radios, constant contradicting advice. At one point, I even saw a live infection count. My parents and I needed a way to block it all out. So we played cards. <laughs> Gin rummy. Small paper squares somehow brought the most comfort and happiness, more than any breaking story could, saying that we would all be okay by August. A little party game became our quiet in a world that constantly chattered. Cards brought our family together. Maybe everyone should pick up a deck. A plague of pus and pox. Smallpox. No one was immune from. Agony or scars. The virus spread from person to person to person until inoculation became the norm. The eradication of the pox triumphed. Will the eradication of COVID triumph? When? Will it work? Will it last? Will it come? Will I take it? Shall I? Can I? Will I? In 1776, the smallpox was raging yet again with the expectation of massive deaths or disfigurement and other lasting health issues for hundreds or thousands of others. For the first time, doctors were experimenting with the new theory of inoculation by infecting people with the live smallpox virus. It was far from an exact science as no one knew exactly how to measure doses or allow for different ages, weight, or body types. The work was hit or miss, with death always a possibility. To inoculate people, doctors used a knife to scrape pus from the pustules erupting on patients. Often using the same knife, they would make an incision in the arm of a healthy person and implant the pus in the cut. While people would still sicken with the smallpox, the hope was that they would not get sick enough to die, but would instead develop immunity to the virus. George Washington inoculated all the soldiers at Valley Forge and kept his army intact. Meanwhile, British soldiers died of the pox in large numbers. John Adams and other delegates to the Second Continental Congress in Philadelphia writing the Declaration of Independence were inoculated. His wife and the future First Lady of the United States, Abigail Adams, decided to have her children and herself inoculated. It was a brave decision by a mother on her own quarantining with her family on their farm. Go Abigail! It's like today, a, a virus, a vaccine, isolated. Abigail, thank you for the vinegar. I'm hoping it will ease my children's rashes. Mercy! It is good to see another face, even from afar. Quarantining and caring for sick children all day is difficult. Why did you choose to inoculate your children? Were you not afraid? Yes, indeed. But I weighed the risks of inoculation against the immunity for my family from this deadly disease. You are brave. Did they get sick? John suffered the least out of the four. Nabby was very sick with fevers, body aches, and erupting pustules. It was a nightmare. Neither Charles nor Thomas responded to the inoculation, so it had to be repeated. For Charles, three times. He suffered horribly and was weak for weeks, but we made it through. Oh, Abigail, have you had any problems since the inoculation? My eyes have suffered. Writing letters to John in Philadelphia is painful. How is John? <laughs> he hated being so far from us without word of what was happening. He was worried about the children. 
He also was inoculated and had to stay secluded for nearly a week. He reassured us in his letters that inoculation was the right decision. I'm happy that all of you are safe. I must return to my children. God be with you. Prayers be with you, Mercy. And to you as well. Guys, I'm reading this book. It's blowing my mind. Our teacher once said, history rhymes. It sure is what I've been reading. This summer is going to be so much fun. I just got over COVID, so now I don't have to worry about it. I'm immune. What do you want to do? Do? Be careful. There's still stuff we don't know yet. It was just a little cold. No worries. Now I can be with you guys. You were lucky, but they don't know if you're really immune and for how long. I know people who got really sick. I'm not taking any chances. Come on, don't be so boring. It's your last summer of high school. You've got to live your life and have fun. Yeah, but who wants to spend their last summer in sick bed? Did you get that text from Katie? Yeah, she was going on and on about the smallpox and the vaccines. Made me think I'll hang on for, until the vaccines come out. Not much longer yet. Okay. Gotcha. Bye. See ya. What's up? I haven't seen you in so long. I know. Oh my goodness, you can see my messy room, can't you? Oh, don't worry, mine isn't great either. I'm too lazy to clean it up. I know, right? And we have all this extra time. Yeah, I'm so unmotivated. Exactly. I have the time, but I never have the energy. You get that text from Katie about the first vaccine? Now they're making the COVID vaccine in record time. How are they getting it so fast? I know. I mean, back in the day, doctors wouldn't even wash their hands before doing surgery. Disgusting. Yeah, and for centuries, people thought it was their blood making them sick. They didn't know about, like, white blood cells and stuff. Modern science is incredible. Not even a year, and there are several vaccines. Crazy that we're living through this. We read about pandemics in history class and in books, and now it's happening to us. It's insane. Fingers crossed, not much longer. I want to see you again. You too. Oh, I gotta run. Dinner's ready. Hey, how you doing? Reading Katie's text. For the first time since March, I'm actually feeling kind of hopeful. I read that too, about the smallpox vaccine. Made me feel if they could do that 200 years ago, we can do it too. I know, and our doctors are doing something really new too, with our RNA, mRNA, I think. Yeah, I saw that too. It's been all over the news. It's awesome. A totally new technology. The article I read talked about how the vaccine gives instructions right to our cells. Yeah, it triggers the cell to recognize a protein found on COVID cells. And the body makes antibodies to fight the virus. Yep, the antibodies make you immune. Pretty great. So I guess we're just waiting now. Yeah, holding on like Katie said Abigail did. Yeah, hard, but we can do it. Ring around the rosy. Centuries of the rosy ring. The plague. Pockets full of posies. A nursery rhyme expressing the inexpressible. Ashes, ashes. YouTube and TikTok expressing the inexpressible. We won't, we won't fall down. How can we express? To those in the future. You who see us with 2020 vision. What we said and did, or didn't say, or didn't do. This is who we were when the virus came. The virus that will change us. Now, right now, we pause. Breath. The air taken into or expelled from the lungs. An inhalation or exhalation from the lungs. Gulp of air. Wind. Puff. Sigh. Gas. Wheeze. Respiration. Inspiration. The power of breathing. Life. The power of life. Hope.
now. We have now this moment, this breath, from which we will build the future. We can't know what it will be. We can't know what we will face. We can't foresee the future. We can imagine what we want that future to be. But in this time of uncertainty, of chaos, this surreal time, when the world seems upside down, this, this is, is our becoming time. Coming time. This is the crucible. When we are distilled to our essence, our being. This is the time when we discover who we are. This is the time when we imagine the future. This, this is, is our, our becoming, becoming time. Becoming. We accept the burdens of this time. Becoming. We imagine a world of humanity and respect. Becoming. We accept the challenge to create better time. Better time. This, this is, is our becoming. becoming. We, we are, are becoming. becoming. Together. Together, we are so strong. I will fight and defend.